Moving forward, I also really liked um, The Scourge of Pretendianism. So that was a Patreon-only full episode. So that was behind the Patreon paywall. But the preview for that came out on November 3rd and caused quite the stir (laughs) on social media. Uh, I was attacked personally by someone I know, actually. But what it was a bit of a shit show. And let's be honest, anytime you talk about pretendianism, it's always just a shit show on social media. And what was really weird is that like the pushback we got was from people who like we actually know for the most part. And I'm like, maybe instead of like saying weird shit on Twitter, why don't you just fucking call me? <laughs> you know? Like that's what was that's actually always what's disturbing to me about how people uh, genuflect and virtue signal on social media. They would rather post something to look, to appear like they have a certain political line about something like pretendianism, um, as opposed to just like treating you like a relative and having a uncomfortable conversation with you, but nevertheless, you know, trying to find some sort of like, I don't know, understanding so that you can move forward in a positive way. And What was interesting is I feel like some of the folks who attacked us for that preview didn't even listen to the episode, first of all. So that's like, that's a thing. Listen to the content you're critiquing before you level a critique on social media. That's a, that's a lesson. That's a lesson learned. But something else that I wanted to say at the time, but I let go just because it felt really negative, like the attention we were getting is, is it okay if I say this, Elena, if I talk for a little bit in my reflection, I don't want to cut you off. Um, You know, particularly with the ethnic fraud and the so-called pretendian episode or um, not episode, but the pretendian issue is that like there's a certain group of people who've really dominated the discourse about pretendianism. And because of that, no one is even allowed to talk about that issue without being automatically associated with certain of those individuals. And then somehow you're interpolated into either quote unquote supporting what that person says or how they go about the issue of like investigating ethnic fraud, or you're supposed to be like against them. And there are only two camps you're allowed to sit in. You're either for them or against them. And so then it becomes about like people's celebrity and their reputation and like personality politics. And something I wanted to say in response to like all of the negative feedback that we got online was that like, I don't have to play by those rules and neither does Elena and neither does our podcast. We're indigenous people. Like I'm a professor of American Indian studies. I just, I came out of another native American studies department. Like I work in the profession that has the largest number of ethnic frauds of any profession or industry in this country. I not only have a right, but I have an obligation to speak out about this issue I am perfectly capable of forming my own analysis (laughs) and my own perspective on this issue that isn't tied to like the reputation of somebody who has pissed you off or tied to the voices that have been like overbearingly loud about this issue on social media. And Elaine and I are two grown women who are very intelligent (laughs) and quite educated who have every right to talk very honestly and very openly about this issue. And I just wanted other people, um, especially native people who listen to this podcast, who have maybe felt scared to have a strong position on pretendianism because of how much backlash you get when you talk about this issue. I hope that our episode opened a door for other native people to talk about this issue openly for the discourse not to be dominated by a few voices, for it not to be like constantly riddled with these like back and forth infighting and like the personality politics that seem to really drive the discourse. No one owns the discourse on pretendianism. All native people should be concerned about this issue. All native people have a right to talk about this issue, to analyze it, to push back against it, to defend their communities and their people against it because it affects all native people. And so I'm just really hoping that that particular episode helped to, I don't know, kind of like pivot away from the way that certain individuals have like forced the rest of us, I guess, 
to talk about pretendianism um, and that it's opened a pathway for people to have a different type of conversation about it. That's what I really hope. And if you didn't get a chance to listen to the episode, I would join our Patreon. Like we have a ton of content for our patrons and it's like a dollar a month and we need the money, but also like, yeah, you get access to that content, but I don't know. I would just highly encourage you to listen to it. That's my spiel. <laughs> I've been wanting to say it for like two months. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a crazy, like the backlash of that. And I, I have to, to do true, you know, true disclosure here. I never really got into a conversation about pretendianism um, until um, a relative friend of mine from Okewinge, um, AC Agoyo, who started Indians.com, Indians with a Z, um, reached out to me about a certain author and um, just asking if I had heard of her or if I knew of anybody from okay, Wenge, who was related to her. And it started this whole um, sort of journey for me about how damaging these individuals can be. Um, and particularly when they're not attached to a community, they're not a member of a community. They don't, they want to claim community for their own um, benefit, but they don't want to be respectful of the community, members of the community. And I, and then I got accused of being anti-Black. And so it hasn't been that long that, that, that I have been um, sort of involved in this issue. But after the episode that, that we did on Red Power Hour, you know, I actually was forced to read about some of these people. And the things that they've done and the camps that they've established and the lives that they've damaged and the, um, you know, the pain that they've caused. And, and I just, as Melanie said, the, this discourse doesn't belong to anyone. Um, the academia, you know, is rampant with, with pretending and, and, and pretendians and it is a real issue when you're taking jobs and and voices from actual native people with lived experience and it is something that should be talked about it is something that's important and people should be afraid to say things but given how melanie was attacked given how i have been attacked you know it's no surprise that people are are not thrilled to talk about it but we should feel we should feel that that we are free to discuss it and free to discuss it in a respectful way. And if we're wrong about someone or something, you know, we're going to admit it. We are not, um, you know, we're not assholes. I'm sorry. But like, if I'm wrong about something, I will admit it and I will apologize for it. And we did. Yeah. <laughs> we were wrong about somebody and it was brought to our attention and so we corrected it. I mean, and also we have a right to be indignant and really pissed off about this because it's like, stop doing this. Stop lying about who you are. And it's like what I have seen um, a lot with the social media based <clears throat> discourse around pretendianism is it's almost like been a silencing in some ways of native people speaking up about this and talking about how disgusting pretendianism itself is, how ethnic fraud is a very pernicious and a very destructive type of playing Indian, a very destructive manifestation and a practice of settler colonialism, that if we don't have a strong understanding of why it happens, and if we don't have a strong approach to tackling it when it happens, right? And then to repairing our communities in the aftermath of like finding out that someone we trusted is an ethnic fraud, then, you know, it's gonna make it much harder, I think, for us to continue to advance the struggle for indigenous liberation. And so I, 
We just need to be able to talk about it openly. And for the people who attack other people online, who want to speak about pretendianism openly, um, a lot of the ire of these people seems to be focused on like the reputation of individuals, whether it's the individuals who are under scrutiny for either lying or potentially lying about who they are or having like a messy understanding of their background. Um, it's like the reputation of that person and then the process of trying to find out if they're lying and then that process of finding out how, how they're lying, that that is more offensive to some people than the actual act of lying in and of itself. And I think that I understand the people who, you know, are very sensitive about like the way that the investigation of ethnic fraud is carried out. Okay, sh sure. Like I, I can agree with you about how some of that doesn't sit well with me, but as a native person, that's not as important. That is secondary. They're far secondary to the act of pretendianism itself. That is far more disturbing to me. And I would actually like to see some of the loudest people on social media who are always weighing in about the pretendian issue, who are always focusing on their like feelings about people's reputations in the way that, you know, the call outs and the accountability process happens online. I would actually like to see you have a really strong stance against pretendianism first and foremost. And I would really like to see support for, I would like to see a pro indigenous perspective advanced by these same people, you know, because this is something that is very racist. It's incredibly racist and it is a disgusting type of settler behavior. It needs to be called out. It needs to be squashed. And like, Native people deserve for, for our own people who are on social media to do this on our behalf, but we just deserve it because, you know, we already have so many settler fires we're always trying to put out. You know, this should be the least of our worries is people just lying about being indigenous, but apparently it's like a huge issue. So this is all I'm saying. Like, how did the discourse, of, how did something, how did an act of profound racism against Native people become about the feelings about individuals and their reputations or the feelings of individuals and their own identity journeys. Your feelings as an individual about those things does not trump the long 500 year struggle for indigenous liberation. It just doesn't. And so, I don't know, maybe we'll get attacked again. <laughs> in review come but on, come on i ain't standing down like <laughs> no. and i would encourage other people you know to say say what you think to say what you think and to have a strong perspective you know about this issue because I'm, I'm honestly i'm just tired of hearing the same like five people yep. just like yelling at each other 